Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'd like to do another what we eat in a week video showing what I'm making for dinner each night of this week. So for tonight's dinner, I'm making beef stew and I'm going to be using cubed up stew meat that came when we bought our half of beef. And then to make the meat stock, the liquid part, the best that it can be, I'm also going to be adding some beef bones. I'm going to do a big knuckle bone and then also some beef marrow bones. I'm adding all of this, including the stew meat frozen. I'm starting it early enough in the day that by dinner time it'll be ready. It's about 10 a.m. in the morning right now, so these are gonna have a good seven, maybe eight hours to cook in there. And they're gonna be in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And it just is a nice low, slow cook that makes tender, delicious stew meat. And it really makes a great beef meat stock. For the vegetables, I'm going to start off with onions, and then I'm also going to add some carrots and some turnips. I'll add the carrots and turnips partway through the cooking just so that they don't get overcooked. The turnips, I find, are a really nice substitute for potatoes in a dish like this. They kind of remind you of potatoes when they're eating them, but they're not starchy like potatoes are, so they're perfect for the GAPS diet. I'm also adding some mineral salt and some peppercorns in my tea strainers. You could also use regular ground pepper if you're on later GAPS or not on the GAPS diet at all. And then just covering everything with filtered water and putting it in the oven to bake. So a couple hours before I plan to eat, I'm gonna pull this out of the oven and add the carrots and turnips. Just chopped kind of coarsely since it is still a little bit of a longer cooking time. You can do this anywhere from one to three hours before you plan to eat and then stick it back into the oven to finish cooking. So once it comes out of the oven, it's ready to serve and eat. So since this is a stew, we usually will have it in bowls just the meat stock and the meat and vegetables all in one bowl and enjoy it that way. We will add some probiotic food along the side, usually sauerkraut. You just wanna make sure that it has cooled enough a little bit so that it will not kill all the probiotic bacteria in the sauerkraut. And then of course, if you want extra filling nourishment, you can always add uh, an egg yolk to the meat stock as well. If you use some good soup bones, and marrow bones that have marrow in them like this, you want to make sure to not forget to get the marrow out. So in, in the big knuckle bone that I used, there's some marrow and you can use a little thin spoon like this little silver baby spoon to scoop it out. And you can just eat it right down straight or mix it into the meat stock. And then for these kind of bones, I will take them out into a bowl and if you just kind of whack them, then the marrow comes right out, you can see. And then you can eat that on its own or mix it into the stew or soup or into the meat stock. It's highly nutritious. Meat stock is really important for anybody who's trying to heal. So that would be anyone on the GAPS diet or anyone just wanting to be extra healthy. For tonight's meal, I'm going to do meatball soup. And just like with the stew meat, the ground meat on its own doesn't contribute to a rich meat stock with all the nutrients that we're looking for. So early in the day, about mid-morning, I'm going to start some meat stock going in my Dutch oven in the oven. And I'm going to be using a large knuckle bone and then some more marrow bones for that. I'm also going to add an onion, some mineral salt, peppercorns, and bay leaves, and then filtered water and put that in the oven at 300 degrees to cook or bake for about six hours. Around six hours is what you usually do for beef meat stock. So after it's been in the oven for about four hours or so, four to five, then I'll take it out and I'm going to add the meatballs. So I keep this really simple. 
Of course, you can add other things to the ground beef mixture if you want to. And I'll probably share some other recipes for some things that you can add, but for right now, keeping this with um, very gaps friendly, I'm just doing straight ground beef. And that's the thing about when you use, when you know how to make a really good stock or broth, it makes the food taste amazing and also using really high quality ingredients. So really high quality bones and meat and everything. It tastes amazing on its own. You don't have to worry about dressing it up too much. So I'm just going to shape about one inch balls of ground beef and add them to the broth and they will cook as nice little meatballs in there. I'm also going to add, so change of plans with the green beans since they don't need a super long cook time anyway and the pot is pretty full after adding the meatballs, I'm actually gonna wait and add them a little bit closer to when we want to eat. So just the meatballs are going into the pot now and back into the oven for another hour or so. Now at this point, I'm gonna take it out and add the green beans. Once the green beans are done, I'm going to go ahead and press a few garlic cloves and then it's ready to serve. For tonight's dinner, I'm doing a recipe that is based on one from the book, The Heal Your Gut Cookbook. It is steak with mushroom and leek gravy. It's a really great way to be able to still enjoy steak on those earlier gaps intro stages, or like I've said with these other recipes, great for anybody at any time. You can also do this recipe a couple of different ways. It's a really good way to use up extra beef stock you could use chicken meat stock too if you had that. Whatever meat stock that you have accumulating, this is a really great way to use it up. If you don't have extra meat stock, you can do like I've done for the meatball dish where you start a pot of meat stock earlier in the day with some knuckle bones and marrow bones, and then later on take the bones out and then follow the rest of this recipe. But I have some extra beef stock from a previous recipe, so I'm going to use that, just like the cookbook says. So I'm going to start by adding my meat stock to a pot. I'm gonna add about one quart, maybe a quart and a half of beef meat stock and bring that to a boil. If there's any scum that rises to the top, I'm gonna to skim that off. So I didn't realize that the camera wasn't recording when I cut up the leeks and added the mushrooms to the meat stock. So what I have here is my about quart and a half of beef meat stock that I brought to a boil and then I put it down to a simmer and then added three leeks chopped and then one pound of baby portobello mushrooms. So I'm gonna put the lid on and then let that simmer for about 20 minutes until they're nice and soft. So once they're done simmering, then I'm going to take the immersion blender and blend it into a gravy. After that, I'm going to season the steak with salt and turn up the heat. I'm gonna add the steaks to the gravy in the pot and then cook them for two to five minutes. I'm probably gonna go closer to five minutes. And then once they're done cooking, I'm gonna remove the steaks and you can either serve them on a plate and drizzle the gravy over the top or you can take the steaks out, cut them up into strips and put them back in the pot and then serve it in a bowl. We'll have this with some fermented food along the side, probably sauerkraut, that's usually our go-to. For tonight's dinner, I'm going to be making a chuck roast. I'm gonna go ahead and sear all the sides of the roast before putting it in to cook slowly. I have baby here with me. And for the meat stock, I'm going to be doing a similar thing that you've seen in a couple other dinners where I add a bone with a joint in it and then some marrow bones along with the roast while it cooks to really add a lot of great nutrients and properties to the finished meat stock. And then I'm going to turn the heat off and let it sit in there while I add some onions, mineral salt, peppercorns, and bay leaves, and then some filtered water. And then I'm gonna put that into the oven at 300 degrees, one to three hours, depending on how the day goes. Before we wanna eat, I'm going to take it out and add some coarsely chopped up carrots. So once I take the roast out of the oven and before I serve it, I go ahead and press some fresh garlic into the meat stock for lots of flavor and really great benefits. After that, it's ready to serve up. 
for this type of a dish, we like to do the roast and the carrots on a plate and then do the meat stock us beside it in a cup. And we'll have some fermented food, probably sauerkraut again, alongside it. For tonight's dinner, I'm doing another beef stew. This is a slightly different version and I'm, I'm going to be doing a little bit of different vegetables with it to keep that variety in the week. This is a great way to use some of those soup bones that have a lot of meat on them. That's what I'm going to be using. Beef shanks are another really great thing to use. Depending on how much meat your family or yourself is eating on gaps, if you find yourself with a lot of extra meat but you need more meat stock, a recipe like this is a really good way to go. And if you're using something like beef shanks or soup bones that have a lot of meat, then you can still end up with a, a great meaty meal too, if that's what you need. So what I'm going to be doing is just throwing everything into my cast iron Dutch oven, like in a lot of my recipes. So I have my meaty beef bones. I'm gonna put those in there. You can roast these in the oven beforehand for even nicer flavor. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to start with them raw. And then I'm going to add some mineral salt, bay leaves, I'm gonna do ground pepper this time instead of peppercorns for variety. Add a coarsely chopped onion, then I'm gonna cover everything with filtered water and put it into the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna let that cook for a good three, three or four hours. Again, our cook time is gonna be around six hours total. And then a couple, one to two hours before I wanna eat, I'm going to add some chopped carrots and then right before it's time to serve it, I'm going to add peas and some garlic. For tonight's meal, I'm doing oxtail soup. Oxtail is one of my all-time favorite cuts of meaty bones for making meat stock. Since there are so many joints, it supplies all kinds of great nutrients into the meat stock, so much gelatin, just because there's so much cartilage and connective tissue. It makes a wonderful meat stock. So to make this, I'm going to be putting my oxtail pieces into my cast iron Dutch oven. And I'm going to add some two cut up onions, some cut up leeks, I'm doing three, but you could do even more than that. So the classic way that I make this oxtail soup is just with the onions and leeks, and then all the other spices and whatever but I wanted to make it a little bit more of a hearty meal, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some chunked up carrots about an hour or two before we want to eat. I'm adding mineral salt, ground black pepper, a few bay leaves, a generous splash of apple cider vinegar, and then covering everything with filtered water. I'm gonna put that into my oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and let it go for around six hours. For that, I'm going to pull it out and add crushed garlic. And after that, it is ready to serve. For today's meal, I'm doing my basic chicken soup. This is one of my favorite ways to make a chicken meat stock. My other favorite way is to use a bunch of chicken backs and feet and heads if I have them. But this way you get chicken meat from the whole chicken and then I also add some chicken feet for extra collagen and great nutrients. To make this, I'm just putting my whole chicken into the pot. I'm making sure that it's defrosted this time. And then I'm adding one coarsely chopped onion, chopped carrots, and then some celery. Now if you're on GAPS intro, especially the early stages, you'll want to not eat the celery. You can add it for flavor and then strain it out. But if you're on later GAPS intro or full GAPS, and fiber is not a problem, then you can go ahead and cut up the celery and keep it in there. Then I'm also going to add some ground black pepper, mineral salt, and cover everything with filtered water. I'll bring that to a boil, and then for these homegrown free-range chickens that we raised, I usually cook them a little bit longer than you would a store-bought chicken, so I usually go for three hours for one of these. After it's done cooking, then I'm going to add my fresh pressed garlic cloves. I'll usually do six for a pot of this size. Feel free to adjust that to your liking and what you're doing well with. Then we'll go ahead and just eat the chicken soup like this. We'll serve it into bowls with the meat and vegetables and meat stock. Later, once we're done eating, I will take the meat out and save that separately if there's any left. There usually is some left. And then 
save any vegetables that are left along with the meat and then save all the meat stock, strain that and keep that in jars for use in other recipes or for just heating up and drinking out of mugs. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed seeing what we ate in this week of Weston A. Price slash Gap's Meals, kind of on a cozy winter soups and stews theme. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who needs some new dinner ideas. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Good job.